Well, this is a video I've been wanting to do for a couple weeks, but had to wait until some snow melted. And I wanted to get some video, but being the Easter holiday, I didn't want to take time away from family. So, I just got some pictures, and hopefully a slideshow will whet your appetite for some videos that I will have in the near future. A few weeks ago, Dad and I bought this 63 and a half Ford Galaxy 500 XL. This body style was originally called a sports hardtop. Now it's mostly referred to as a fastback. It was uh, brought out in mid-year to primarily race in NASCAR where it was very successful winning Daytona and several other races that year. A lightweight version was also used in NHRA drag racing that had fiberglass fenders, hood, doors, and aluminum bumpers. Uh, very few of those were also sold to the public. And that's just to give you some background on the racing heritage of this car. And both Dad and I have a history with these cars also. Dad had one while at college in the mid-60s. And I actually bought one way back before I even had a driver's license. Paid $200 for it, so that should give you some idea on what condition it was in back then. And it's actually still around. We still have it. And uh, we'll be using parts of it to fix this one up. I should mention that uh, this she uh, already has a name also. When I went over to my parents a few weeks ago to look at the car, I had the computer on listening to one of my good uh, YouTube friends, uh, UXW Bill's, blog TV show. Now we were sitting around talking about the car and the Oak Ridge Boys song Elvira came on. Dad said, hey, that'd be a good name for the car. So uh, it, uh, so the name stuck. And it really fits well with the raven black paint job and bright red interior. The chrome bumpers are in really good condition too. Trim on the sides and grill is anodized aluminum. Some of that will need to be used from the parts car and some of it can be straightened and polished. The fender flags on the front denote that it has a 390 cubic inch engine in it which came standard that year with a four barrel carburetor and dual exhaust. Here you can see a different angle of the fastback roof line. The hood has paint missing on some of it and is rusted, but we got a spare hood in the deal, so it just needs to be painted and installed. We will probably be getting different wheels but are still trying to figure out what size would be best. The wheels on it are 15 inch chrome and what I believe are called smoothies. They have, they would have uh, baby moon center caps on them but they were changed from origi the original uh, 14 inch wheels because the previous owner put on four wheel disc brakes which is a very nice upgrade to have on a 4,000 pound car. When the disc brakes were put on, it was also upgraded to power brakes with a dual chamber master cylinder. Original would have been a single, ma uh, single chamber, which meant all four brakes were basically on the same circuit. Now if the front brake fails for some reason, the rear brakes are still available to stop the car. The previous owner also put on a new cam, or put in a new cam and lifters in the engine along with an aluminum intake 
manifold and Edelbrock carburetor. We did get most of the original engine parts. The valve covers needed to be changed to a later 60s version because the oil filler tube was originally located in the intake manifold. The aluminum intake doesn't have that provision, so valve covers that have openings to put oil in needed to be used. On the firewall next to the blower motor, you can see the ends of the heater core, which it will need to be replaced. The only rust on the car is below this area where the heater core leaked and started rusting the floor. But it's not too bad from what I hear. Haven't looked at it myself yet. The interior is in pretty good shape. It's definitely not perfect, but that just makes it more drivable when you're not worried about it as much. There were two trim levels available in the fastback body style. The Galaxy 500 had bench seats, and the 500XL had bucket seats, console with floor shifter, and rear bucket style seats with a contoured rear shelf. One of the few options on this car is a rear seat speaker in that shelf. Unfortunately, someone cut holes to add more speakers but I do have a spare shelf without holes that was bought at a swap meet way back when I was going to fix up the old uh, parts car. Here's a better look at the interior showing the console with floor shifter. Eventually we want to get air conditioning which was a unit that hung in the area between the dash and the console. It uh, works totally independent of the heater system, so you don't have to mess with that also when you're installing it. This would be a good picture also to show the leg room the driver has. With my disability, I need to have hand controls to be able to drive. I'll have a video later showing this, but there should be plenty of room to have hand controls and uh, for someone else to be able to drive using the pedals as normal. This is a shot of the instrument panel. I'll be doing some detail painting here. And the steering wheel has some cracks that need to be filled. There are some bezels around some of the controls missing that need to be put on from the parts car. The two knobs closest to the steering column are fresh air vents that come in from the cowl vent to either side under the dash. Farther over towards the passenger side, you can see that in 1963, you could listen to the music on the AM radio. But there's not so much music anymore on the AM. There is a reproduction AM FM radio available I'd like to get that is stereo. It has inputs for an MP3 player and CD changer along with additional speaker jacks. It's north of $500 though so that'll be quite a ways down the road probably. I would like to see if I can get the clock working. Maybe I can do a video on that if I'm successful at it. And I've got a few spares of those lying around I can work with also. This also came with a padded dash as an option. You can see holes just above the brushed aluminum panel where clips held the dash pad in. Reproduction dash pads are available, but that's not on the high priority list since it really doesn't look too bad painted the way it is now. Here's another picture of the rear seat area. Doesn't it look nice and comfortable? I think you can get a better look at the rear speaker area and the extra hole that was cut in it. What a shame. And here you can see my first contribution. The trim ring on the left tail light was bent up. So I got one from the 
one of the spares and polished it up and installed it. I think Dad was kind of upset when he saw how good the uh, exhaust system was. I think he was looking forward to putting some chrome tips on it and maybe some glass packs or something also. Well, that's all the picks I have for now. The the uh, horn and turn signals don't work properly, but Dad was looking at it and found a plug in the wiring harness that was damaged, so hopefully that'll fix it so we can get it inspected and licensed. And we are going to put power steering on it to make it easier for me to drive. We found a junkyard that specializes in 60s Ford products that'll be really helpful. And they sent us a complete setup, including the mounts that they cut off the frame to weld on to this car. And uh, the, the uh, transmission leaks quite a bit, so it'll need to go to a transmission shop to have some seals replaced, probably. We are DIY kind of guys, but... I can't really do much in the way of big projects and dad's getting more willing to just pay somebody to do the hard stuff than rather than tackle it himself so uh, we will need to get new or get wheels and uh, more importantly tires they're dry rotted or cracking or whatever and uh, but we'll need to do that before it's driven too much. But uh, when all that's done, we should be good to cruise around to shows this summer. And I've got some trips that uh, around the area also that I'd like to be able to take Elvira on. So that's it for now. I'll be making more videos hopefully sooner than later. Uh, showing progress and any little jobs that I can tackle myself. So, hope you enjoyed this look at the 63 Galaxy, and thanks for watching.